Hello everyone. The following video is a re-upload. It is a remaster. So going through some of the videos that had been taken down by YouTube. This one wasn't taken down by YouTube, but I made it private because I just did not want to get another strike on my channel or anything. But upon viewing this video, I think that I made relatively good points and relatively good arguments. Essentially, the point of this video was arguing against somebody who happened to be uh, a conservative, so kind of like the conservative twins, actually almost exactly like the conservative twins, as the conservative twins have before made a video stating that homosexuality was a mental disorder. And being that I uploaded this video back in a time where I, I think I had a lot more tenacity, a lot more fervor, uh, a, a lot more um, sort of attitude. And it's not to say that that attitude isn't gone, it's just I tend to be more selective on what I show on YouTube for good reasons. You know, I don't want my YouTube channel to just go poof. I've worked very, very hard on this, and there's absolutely things I would consider to just be artwork. So the what what's essentially being argued in this video by me is that, for one, this is a talking point that has been brought by the far right. It's a talking point like that falls in line with the whole homo global agenda conspiracy theory perpetuated predominantly by white supremacists like white nationalists, Nazis, that kind of thing. And I'm making the point that of, you know, you making the point that this person being black is making arguments perpetuated by white nationalists, by neo-Nazis, by racists and far right individuals. But I suppose it is a talking point that conservatives themselves could jump on uh, in general. Uh, so I made the video to basically say, like, it's garbage, it's junk, it's it's a bunch of nonsense. No, homosexuality is not a mental disorder. To, he, he specifically called it schizophrenia. So he was saying homosexuality, trans identity, that kind of stuff is, is like schizophrenia. So I made a video very angrily saying, no, it's not. Uh, you know, that that's nowhere near the truth. I, I've, uh, I think... I, I made an argument in favor of trans rights, but back then, I don't think I had a very clear understanding of the trans community and the sorts of rights that they kind of advocate for. So I, I did put in some clarification on that, is, is that um, I, I fully support ultimate bodily autonomy in that a person should be able to fully and truly express themselves to having the right to individual the, the, the right to individual freedom of expression and with really no limitations i mean if, as long as you're not actively hurting other people i don't really think that there's any problem with with what you're doing so i i included some things from the dsm5 from um from nih.gov and pubmed as well as uh psychiatry.org and the national lgbtq task force.org and um those are some new things that will like be, I'll include the things that were originally in the description, but I will also include those in the description, the new ones, the new things, the new citations as well. So um, this, this video was uploaded a long time ago. The original release date of this video was October 7th of 2020. So that was for four years ago. Ultimately, overall, the message of the video is very much saying, is, is being in favor of LGBTQIA plus rights and actively speaking out against someone who is against LGBTQ rights. Like I said, I don't think this person's channel still exists. If it does, I don't, I don't know. I've not sought it out. And I refused to show anything from their channel because um, being such a small channel, it's very, um, very easy to get targeted. And I, I like some of the artwork that I put into this video as well as as far as editing goes. And, and some of that I, I miss. And I don't do that as much because of the disability, the chronic pain condition that has debilitated me. It's far harder to, to do that kind of thing. Uh, it would take me a, a lot longer to put videos out if I did that. So um, that that's the original release of this video. This, this is a video that is uh, arguing very much in favor of LGBTQ rights against somebody who is very, very, very conservative and, and, and wanted to destroy LGBTQ rights and essentially have us put in insane asylums. Um, so this this is a remaster of, of that video. I don't I may not necessarily have the same attitude and, and, and things presented in this video that I do today. I want to emphasize that this is an older video. It is remastered. It is it is not a new video. I did not record this yesterday. I recorded this like over four years ago. So just keep that in mind. It's it's actually an old video that's just been remastered. I just thought um, I made some really good points in it and I thought that it could be salvaged. I just needed to bleep out a few things and uh, add some corrections, which I did. So just keep that in mind moving forward that 
th this is not like a current video. This is this is an older video that I've remastered. <laughs> Today we'll be exploring a very misguided young gentleman who has seemed to forego any idea as to what the actual meaning behind psychology is. Supposedly I'm in the same category as this person, so I guess that means they're a social liberal or a domesticated anarchist. Somewhere between anarchy and... A liberal democracy? I don't think so. This person seems to be highly collectivist. An identitarian. Somebody who engages in identity politics, much like people on the so-called alt-right. Whatever label you want to take. Collectivism. Tribalism, herd mentality. I am staunchly against this. this. I'm, I'm individualistic. And I'm not really sure how to go about making this video. I don't want to put too much of his videos in mind. Because I've had bad experiences making counter arguments to this type of individual from the past. To, to criticize, criticize, to make counter-arguments. Counter People like this generally from past experience, even though it's fair use, will still go out of their way to make some kind of copyright, some fraudulent copyright claim. Specifically since I'm not a big channel, there's nothing I can do about it. So I will try very, very difficult, or very, very hard, or very, very, it, it'll be very difficult to leave as little content of his out of my video whilst still responding to the claims he makes. So, I will leave links to his video in the description below in the videos he has made in the description below. I'll, I'll be addressing a specific video on this one. I'll leave the link to that video in the description below so you can go and watch it for yourself. But I will be addressing the claims that he makes without trying to play anything from his actual video. I might... I might include screenshots from his channel or from the video itself. But, but I won't be... be... I'll try to stray away from playing his video. video. Unless, Unless I get permission from him to use it. Even then, then, I will tread lightly on that because, because I don't trust his their word. word. And believe me, his perspective is not. It's not left leaning. It sounds like a bunch of brainwashed garbage. So, I'm going to pause it here and we'll begin. All right, so his first claim is to say, what is it that psychologists have done to prove that homosexuality is not part of schizophrenia? Well, this is um, really embarrassing, but psychologists don't do tests. Well, they do. They do tests. They do psychological studies. But the test that shows that homosexuality or people of the LGBT community are not suffering from some kind of delusion of grandeur actually came from neurology, not psychology. It was a study done of neurochemistry. They subjected people who were homosexual, bisexual, and heterosexual to sexual imagery and looked at the brain's function, the neuro eh, um, activity in the brain. Come to find out that the homosexual brain is wired 
like like a, a homosexual male responds to the same stimulus and we see the same parts of the brain light up and react in the same way as when a heterosexual female is subjected to the same sexual stimulus. These studies have been done and it's been controlled, replicated, um, observed, and predictive, predictable. We're getting to the point where we can almost predict if your child is going to be homosexual or not, which is dangerous in and of itself because you have a light of... Now, I want you to pay very close attention because I have a feeling you are a black gentleman. White supremacists if they knew how to do this, would probably abort the fetus. So it's, or either that with the advent of CRISPR, the ability to genetically mutate and alter a human, the human genome might try to genetically alter the fetus so that it doesn't come out gay, bisexual, or trans. This would be unethical. This is why people in the psychological community or neurological community do not engage in such a thing because it would be considered unethical. Part of the reason why you do not find homosexuality in the DSM-5 is because there is no victim. These are two consenting adults that choose to have the sexual interaction, romantic interaction. This is another thing, too. There was a philosopher, I forget his name, I can leave the link to the video in the damn fucking description below if you don't fucking believe me, but it's fucking real. He made the argument that you cannot use religion nor science to argue for the morality of homosexuality. Actually, the cosmic skeptic brought this up as one, at one point. He made a chart um, about different forms of morality, things that are amoral or actually moral or fall into an ethical category. Homosexuality, according to his philosophy, does not fall under any kind of moral category. It is neither moral nor immoral. It is just a thing. Now, actually engaging in homosexuality is a behavior, is an act. Sexual attraction is involuntary. This is not up for discussion nor dispute, nor is it something that anyone in the scientific community, nor psychologist or neurologist would dispute. Even a biologist wouldn't even dispute this. It is pretty just pretty much just well-known fact. In fact, I've even met white supremacists self-proclaimed national socialists and fascists who even capitulate to this understanding that sexuality is involuntary, attraction is involuntary. If they can understand this, why can't you? That's a good question. But it's pretty well documented through neurology, not psychology, but psychology does follow up with it, that sexual attraction whether you're heterosexual, bisexual, or homosexual, is involuntary. So the attraction is an instinctual response. Now, you could make the argument that acting on the sexual, um, the, the attraction, is a behavior and that could be avoided. Well, that's true, but give me a fucking break. Are you fucking kidding me? You're going to tell me, like, I, I would be willing to put stakes on this, that if you put two heterosexual men or two heterosexual females together on a deserted island far away from any civilization, completely cut off from civilization for, let's say, 20 years, I would be willing to make a stake that at one point they are going to end up fucking each other because they just get so horny to the point where they get tired of masturbating and end up having sex. And that sex will be of homosexual nature. Now, does that mean that they are suddenly homosexual? No. It just means that we are a biological creature. We are <sighs> bound by the rules and laws of nature and, of course, physics, but this has nothing to do with physics. This has more to do with nature. Naturally, we are a sexual animal, and we have, our, we, we have a compelled instinct to want to appropriate and breed. Even though homosexuality doesn't lead to the causality of offspring or reproduction, it is still 
as Maslow's hierarchy of needs would illustrate a human need and a very, very strong drive in the human body. It's actually allocated to be up there with the need for food and water and social interaction. It's a very powerful drive, the sex drive, and will override eventually, if deprived of sexual attention, your heterosexual allocation. Now, if you were to be rescued after 20 years of being isolated on this island, you probably would never bring it up. And the moment you laid eyes on a whatever the opposite gender is as a heterosexual, you would probably engage in heterosexual activity again. This is just the study of human behavior, nothing more. It is not moral, it is not immoral, it is not ethical, it is not unethical. There is no argument you can give to me that supports that it is unethical or ethical. So to say that homosexuality is some kind of derangement or some, some kind of mental delusion, you will have to give more evidence than, well, I don't know of any psychological study. There were no psychological studies. Well, there were, but the main study you're looking for will be that of neurology, not psychology. Psychology is the study of behavior. Neurology is the study of how the brain actually works. So let let me just lay that out clear. Homosexuality is not just the act of sex with the same gender. Homosexuality, in fact, there was a debate long, a long time ago in the psychological community as to whether or not homosexuality was even the right term, since we are using Greek and Roman and words to describe these things in, medical, in the medical community. They, they were saying maybe the more correct term was homophile, but they felt that that would be confused with, you know, what we allocated to what we call pedophiles. And people would get the wrong idea, so they decided to keep the word as homosexual. The problem with the word homosexual is that it's purely sexual, and it's not. Homosexuality is not just sexual, it's the mental, romantic, and physical attraction to the same gender. So you could be homosexual and never have sex and still be a homosexual. It's true. You don't have to engage in the act of sex to be a homosexual. It means you're attracted to the same gender. Romantically as well. Meaning you want to hold hands. You want that kiss. You... you desire that you desire affection from the same gender it's it's not just sex that's ridiculous and there's plenty of psychological and neurological studies to back that you haven't done your homework shut up let's continue on i will be right back to continue watching this because i am not going to show any of this person's footage because like i said i don't trust them. All right, so let me just sum up. I think I can pretty much get this in one shot here. So he goes on to talk about the DSM-5 and the symptoms of schizophrenia. Well, can you please explain to me this since you think that LGBT people are suffering from delusions of grandeur? I'm not trans, I am homosexual. So trans is a different subject, and I will get to that in a second. But the idea that uh, is posed here, but he shows, oh shit, is delusions, hallucinations, and disorgan disorganized thinking. Okay. Can you please explain to me from the perspective of homosexuality what is in the room currently that... It, I seem to think is there that has no actual cause and effect relationship with the rest of reality that no one else sees. Because I don't see that. There is no delusions of grandeur. There's nobody here 
um, that homosexuals aren't suffering from delusions, the false beliefs that they're based in reality. There, there, there actually is evidence that homosexuality is based in reality, being that there's documentations of homosexuality that date all the way back to as soon as human beings had the ability to record it as a thing. If you go back far enough in time, you'll find that there's no word for homosexuality. Homosexuality didn't come about until about the 20th century. The reason for this is many cultures, pretty much all cultures across the world, had no word for homosexuality or very vague terms for it because they just considered it a part of life or a part of nature. It wasn't until the three Abrahamic religions showed up, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, the word sodomite became a word. The word became a thing because they used homosexuals as kindling to burn people at the stake. They would douse them in kerosene oil, set them on fire, and literally use them as kindling. So thus they became called bits. It wasn't until the 20th century, the early 1900s, that psychologists coined the term homosexual. But there is nothing in the room that does not have a physiological interaction of cause and effect relationship with other things in the room to prove that it is or is not there. That is the definition of delusion, is that you think there is a pink unicorn in the room, even though if there were, it would be bumping into all this shit behind me. God damn it. And it's just not bumping into it. There's, my tables aren't knocking over randomly. Uh, the stereo system isn't falling apart. So I think it's safe to say there is no unicorn in the room. It is not observable, measurable, predictable data. There is nothing there. So if somebody were to step up to me and say that there's a unicorn in the room and they can see it, it's right there. Okay, why is it interacting with the rest of reality? Why is it observable? Why can we not measure um, its impact or cause and effect relationship with other material around it, even though we can't see it, like we can do with the light spectrum or the spectrum of sound waves? We can't see them. They're not auditory to us. But we can actually measure them. And there is a cause and effect relationship within our perceivable reality that they do actually impact. So this also goes into the other part of schizophrenia, the disorganized thinking. This is not disorganized thinking. This is highly intellectual. It comes from many, many years of studying psychology and various facets of science that have intrigued me out of curiosity. That's not disorganized thinking. You know, one of the tests that they do to try to figure out if somebody is suffering from delusions of grandeur, but specifically with schizophrenia, is they will lay three objects or a plethora of objects in front of the person and ask them to pick two and tell them, uh, pick two that are alike and describe to the psychologist why they think they are alike. A schizophrenic might, for instance, pick up this, a cup a glass, and a lighter, and say, well, they're alike because they're, they're both fractal. What the fuck does that mean? Nothing. Whereas a rational person would pick these up and might say, well, they're alike because they're both man-made. That's rational. I don't know where you get this idea, honestly. And if you really want to get into the DSM-5 and LGBT, well, the trans does have a stake in that. The DSM-5 actually does enlist gender dysphoria. This is what trans people suffer from. That is why trans people are still in the DSM-5, because they have a body dysphoria malfunction to where they perceive themselves as being the alternative gender. And this has actually caused a lot of problems, psychological and physical problems, as people with gender dysphoria have engaged in genital mutilation, bodily harm, and... They are an endangerment to themselves because of gender dysphoria. And just like 
other people with body dysphoria, such as bulimia and anorexia, do tremendous amounts of harm because of the body dysphoria that they experience. Homosexuals do not fall into that category. They are not a harm to themselves or others. They, there is literally nothing wrong. Later on in the video, he brings up the idea or the fact that homosexuals carry, homosexuals and bisexual males to be specific, recorded by the CDC, carry a large percentage or the majority of the percentage of America's, quite specifically, America's um, HIV infection. That's true, but he doesn't say HIV, he says STDs, which is not true. Actually, um, the homosexual and bisexual males, the only STD you can say that uh, they take the cake on is HIV. Actually, all the other STDs are allocated to heterosexuals. They're not very prevalent. Uh, things, especially, there's actually an S, several STDs that men are the carriers for, but they do not actually affect males. They only affect females, so there's no way they are a problem for homosexual males. It would be very, very hard-pressed to say that they are a problem for homosexual females, especially if homosexual females do not interact sexually with males. They would never catch these. So that's a weird inversion all in and of itself. So point blank, that's full of shit. You're full of shit. You don't know what the fuck you're talking about. You are talking out of your ass. And also, I'd also like to point this out to you. What you're regurgitating is somewhat of a very strange slant or spin on a white supremacist idea known as the homo global agenda. Thank you. You are regurgitating your enemy's talking points. Good job of being a complete fucking dote. Seriously. This is fucking moronic. You are suffering from conspiracy brain syndrome at this point. The homo global agenda is an absolute fucking conspiracy theory. There is no proof, no evidence, nothing to support the idea that homosexuality is contagious. That is ridiculous. That is outright retarded. <clears throat> I've even seen a self-proclaimed national socialist or somebody who proclaimed to be a fascist told me the reason why they don't want homosexuals to be seen in public light is because of epigenetics and that if their children have the epigenetics to become homosexual, I might activate those epigenetics by being openly homosexual. So that tells me that they have an understanding of actual biological science because that is a theory, not a fact. It's a theory of where homosexuality comes from in genetics, that they come from epigenetics or dormant genetics that are activated because of uh, different hormones that are released while the fetus is in utero. We have evidence for that, but it's just a theory. We don't actually know that that is fact yet. So, no. You are regurgitating a different version of the same white supremacist talking point of the homo-global agenda, which I find extremely fascinating and interesting. That you as a black gentleman are regurgitating something of a group of people that would have... Seriously, where do you get this shit? This is seriously, you are suffering from conspiracism, something I actually believe should belong in the DSM-5. Anyway, so then you go on to proclaim that LGBT people are unhygienic and you start talking about AIDS. I need to make something very clear to you because you bring up the Africa problem of HIV, okay? HIV and AIDS are different. AIDS means acquired immune, acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. 
and there are actually multiple versions of AIDS. HIV is a virus that can cause autoimmune deficiency syndrome. Um, so, yeah, HIV can only be caught in very specific ways through blood transfusion, through basically the exchange of bodily fluids minus that of urine or mucus because HIV does not seem to be able, is not able to exist in these things as they tend to have enzymes or be highly too acidic or base or alkaline for them to, for HIV to exist in. Other versions of acquired immune deficiency syndrome would be things like eczema. That's, that's one. Fibro, I think fibromyalgia is in that category. Um, there's another one that's a lot like eczema. Let me think of what it's called. Psoriasis. That's another one. These are different forms of autoimmune deficiency syndromes. They are not caused by HIV. So yes, it's very, very possible that bad nourishment can cause acquired immune deficiency syndrome because without proper nutrients, your body is not able to get enough protein to sustain its own immune system. Absolutely, that is possible. But it is not possible to contract a virus because of poor nutrition. That's bullshit. And then he makes the proclamation that we need to stop, that LGBT people need to stop lying because we're taking away attention from the black problems. Has it ever occurred to you that there's just different minorities that have different issues that need to be addressed? It's not that the LGBT community is trying to take away attention to issues from the black community. It could just be that the LGBT community is struggling to maintain their ability to have liberties and freedoms in an ever more growing conservative America, just like the black community. Did that ever cross your punitive little fucking mind? And also some of the comments that you make about LGBT people also reaffirm what psychologists and so sociologists have laid notice of in the past, particularly in the 90s, that the white community seems to be more accepting of homosexuals than the black community. This has nothing to do with race, so don't get your panties in a twist. This has more to do with the fact that people who of different ethnicities, predominantly people who are black and people who are Latino, happen to be more religious. That's right, religious. The black community is way more religious and less secular than the white community. The white community has been seeing a ever-growing number of atheists, nihilists, and secularists, and agnostics than the black community. So, actually, I even remember this. Back in the 90s, there was a talk show host where I saw a black person actually say that homosexuality was a white disease that they were giving to the black community, even though, again, across cultures before the three Abrahamic religions were even a thing, homosexuality was not treated the way that it is today or in the past century. People of the African Plains did not discriminate against homosexuals or as even Ghazi Kudzo says, same gender loving person. There is a lot of LGBT people of black complexion that have even lesser rights and liberties or have their rights and liberties impinged upon because some white supremacist feels the need to take it upon themselves to impinge upon them. You are doing a major disservice to your own LGBT people within your own collective black identitarian mentality by doing this. Is that what you want to do? I don't think that's a good idea. To me, a lot of the things that you say, 
I, I'm sorry. I, I hate to say this, but this guy, I don't even know how to say his fucking name. Big Yeti? Yeah, Big Yeti. You sound just like the white nationalists, the ethno-nationalists, the white supremacists, the fascists that come to argue with me about my liberal stances on things. You seriously do. You sound just like them. Exactly like them. Only you're black instead of white. I am not in favor of this. This is not progressing towards a what we would call a civilization. If we're trying to build a civilization, we are trying to reach the pinnacle of a society. And if we are at we we, we one could argue we've never reached a full fledged civilization before because we keep running into hiccups like this. Neo-Lysenkoism, pseudoscience, people who don't even know what they're talking about, and conspiracy brain syndrome. This is a conspiracy theory. There is no agenda to try and silence the black people by saying, look at gay rights, let's put gay rights up on a pedestal. No. If you look at the white nationalist comments in my comment sections on my videos, they are quite apparently against homosexuality or LGBT anything, especially when you put the Q on the end there. So, no. Just no. It's not a sign of schizophrenia. There's no evidence of that. You will be hard-pressed to find any psychological study or neurological study or soci sociology study that goes outside of the white supremacist circle to support your claim that it is any form of schizophrenia. In fact, the white supremacists don't even fucking say that. That's embarrassing. You should be ashamed that you have this video. It's disgusting. I'm not going to tell you to take it down because I think you should be able to voice your opinion. So go for it. And just know that this is an opinion of yours. It is not backed by any kind of scientific or relevant data. It is not observable, measurable, replicable, um, anything. It's not. It's you taking, cherry-picking tidbits of bullshit information and formulating an opinion of your own. So, yeah. And actually, if you go to the LGBT community that is black, you might be very, very, very frustrating to them. Oh, yeah, there's this whole idea of cleanliness thing, which is funny because the stereotype of the homosexual male is that they are overly hygienic. And let me just say this to you, that the reason why gay and bisexual men have the highest percentage of HIV, not STDs, HIV specifically, in America is because many of them are highly promiscuous. I'm not going to deny that. But that does not mean that just because one is homosexual that they are going to catch HIV. I'm 37 years old. I came out of the closet when I was 15. I have had a lot of partners. I'm not going to tell you the numbers, but I've had a lot of partners. I, to this day, am in a monogamous relationship, and my partner has been with a lot of people as well, and neither one of us have ever contracted any STD of any kind. How the fuck do you explain that? You can't. Not with this garbage theory. So, no. Homosexuality was taken out of the DSM, what was it, the DSM-3, many years ago, because 
at some point they they considered it to be unethical to condemn homosexuality as some kind of mental illness as it does as i've repeated this multiple times already it does not produce any victim it does not produce harm to the individual and you could make the claim of the the whole hiv claim which is the same thing that the white supremacists do by the way uh that's due to unsafe sexual practices, and the same applies to people in the heterosexual community and intravenous drug users. So what's your fucking point? If you are smart about how you conduct yourself sexually, then you will not catch HIV. It's as simple as that. And with the advent of things like, and I've I'm not against it, but I'm not necessarily for it, but I think it's a step in the right direction. As far as medical science goes, the advent of... I'm trying to think of the fucking name of this drug. PrEP. Most people just call it PrEP. If taken properly, can actually keep you from catching HIV. Even if you've been exposed to it. It's 98% effective, so there's a 2% risk factor. Still, that's better than anything else that's been out there. What more needs to be said? You let me know in the comments section below, Mr. Big Yeti. And I'm sorry to say, you are an identitarian. You are a fucking collectivist. And so are the white supremacists. They're collectivists. They believe that their race, ethnicity, has everything to do with their individual identity. That race, ethnicity, and culture cannot be separated. That these things are what ultimately come to define you, that they somehow lay in your genetics or something ridiculous. This is not the case. Sociologists have for many years discovered that behaviorally we mimic what we grow up around. You are a, an American, by all means, and more specifically, an American that probably mimics the society you grew up around. You probably have very little in common with African people. Just truth. It's the same as I have very little in common with people in Europe. Now, there is a sort of collectivized thing where it's uh, things, the, the only sense of collectivism that truly exists is that we are all inherently human. And that it doesn't really matter what culture or what race or ethnicity you are, everybody has fundamental or intrinsically human values such as the ability to empathize and sympathize the idea that our children are precious and should be taken care of and protected at all costs the idea that rape murder molestation abuse these things are inappropriate this comes from that, that those, those moral ideals they they although um, through my lens of meta-ethics, they are unethical, but the idea of morality is ultimately subjective, but they, this appears like objective morality because so many people across the world agree that these things are unethical. So it appears like it is objective morality, but we have almost unilaterally, universally, subjectively agreed that these things are unethical. There is nothing in nature stopping you from doing any of these things. It's us that creates morality. It does not actually, morality does not actually exist in the natural world. That is an entirely different argument, and I have a video on that, if you want it, I will leave a comment and I'll leave you the link to it. Um, but no. Uh, your, your 
culture is mimicked by the society you're growing up you you grew up in that this this has been explained by sociologists and psychologists for decades now so just stop with the whole identity politics it's dumb and the real problem with a collective collectivism is either you're in or you're out and there's very 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 little room for any kind of deviation any kind of deviation means you are out and that means that there's no room for individualistic expression which impinges impinges upon your individual rights and freedoms and liberties if you wish to participate in this form of collectivism fine just know that you don't have the right to impinge that upon others. I personally am of the persuasion we are one species, we are one breed, we are one animal that happens to come in a variety of colors. And it's hardly even a variety. If you want to line up people from the whitest of white to the darkest of dark, you will find a nice little spectrum that sort of blends in with itself very nicely. Because ultimately, the thing that gives you a darker complexion has really is just an overdevelopment of melanin. That's it. And I have that same melanin in my skin we're not different genetically speaking and i went over this with you with this gentleman in the comment section between any two given human beings you're only going to have basically a point two or point two percent genetics no it's two what is it you, you we're all you're gonna only have like a two percent genetic variance or genetic diversity that's it that's not even enough to that certainly not enough for speciation and it's not enough for different breeds like we do with our domesticated animals like you have different breeds of dogs domesticated dogs different breeds of domesticated cats two different breeds of dog or two different breeds of domesticated cat are going to have a genetic variance of 48 percent that's huge. Any two given human beings is only going to be like, actually, I'm sorry, it's 0.01% genetic variance. Even between you and I, you being a black gentleman and me being a white gentleman that happens to be homosexual, there's only going to be 0.01%. The human genome of the human species has a very low genetic variance very low extremely low and actually it would be in the human species best interest to interracially couple and reproduce to increase genetic variance usually in the animal kingdom if we look at nature animals with a lower genetic variance usually die out there are, we are not the only species that has this low genetic uh, genetic variance, but the only one like us that seems to be surviving well with it would be the blue whale. Well, even then they're on the cusp of extinction. So it would be wise, but hey, I'm just using science. What the fuck do I know? So... When it comes going back to homosexuality and morality, it is neither ethical nor unethical. It is neither moral or immoral. The only people who make the argument that it is ethical or unethical or moral or immoral are people of a theist persuasion. In the end, it really makes no difference. As like if you went to Meta Sage and you looked at his Meta Ethics video. He drew the comparison of a man licking his balls all day. He said, if you were to give a diagnosis to this, what would it be? Why should you care? I mean, why, why, why does it matter if a man sits at home lapping away at his own testicles all day? As long as he doesn't impinge on others, what does it matter? 
It doesn't. That's the thing. It doesn't. But there's a great many of people out there who think that it does. And that's a problem. And this whole divisive concept of putting blacks against white is sickening and you need to stop. We need to work together, not separately. That's fucking dumb. That's why I call you a collectivist. Because you seem to want to be different. Instead of defining yourself differently as an individual, you decided that, hey, all black people are like me. Well, I'm sorry to tell you, you cannot speak on behalf of all black people, nor can I speak on behalf of all white people, and nor can the white nationalists or ethno-nationalists or white supremacists speak on behalf of all white people. That's just dumb. That's what you call a gross overgeneralization, and that's where stereotypes come from. If you want to know. Please feel free to leave me comments in the comment section before, below. I really do look forward to hearing from you, Big Yeti. And I've seen other videos you've made, and I'd love to counter those as well. And if you would like to know more about my specific take on conspiracism and conspiracy brain syndrome and why I think it should belong in the DSM-5 as a mental illness, you're more than welcome to peruse. I don't tend to look very fondly upon theism either. I'm a nihilist. Guilty as charged. So... Again, let me know what you think in the comments section below. Like, share, subscribe. Hit the bell button on any channel you're subscribed to. And with that, I believe in choices, Big Yeti. The facilitation of choices and freedom. Maximizing freedom. Not one's ability to impose one's will on others against their own will.